in this video, I am going to talk about how to create XUnit tests with ASP.NET 7 and C Sharp. And my name is Kaushik Rajyadri. So, what is covered in this video is that creating a unit test project with the help of Visual Studio 2022 and ASP.NET 7, and how to use a test explorer, writing the first tests, and writing the first theory. So, without any further ado, let's switch over to Visual Studio and um, let's create a new project. And I've got this XUnit test project which I had created last day. So it is in the recent project templates and click on next. Give it a name by Learn unit test by X unit and create a location which I've already placed here in the options, tools options. You can always fix the location and then click on next. .NET 7 long term support or standard term support. This is the current version. Click on create, it will create the project for me. Now the X unit test project is created for me and let's inspect the project file for this. XUnit project. So by double clicking this project and you will see that the property group target framework .NET 7 implicit usings enabled and enable is enabled. So is packable false. Now let's inspect one of these uh, I mean these um, tags one by one. So target framework specifies the target framework for my test project that is .NET 7. Okay. And is packable is here, is packable is false. It is redundant for unit test projects cannot be packed by default. Okay. So we can safely remove this line if we wish. So we can just let's remove this. Save this. And X unit package brings in this X unit package. This brings in three child packages which includes xunit.core xunit xunit brings xunit.core and xunit.assert and there is xunit.analyzers okay so assert xunit dot core is a testing framework itself and xunit dot asset is the asset library which contains the asset class and xunit analyzes re enables Roslyn analyzers to detect common issues with unit tests and xunit test extensibility and the package xunit dot runner dot visual studio and microsoft dot net dot test dot sdk are required for being able to run our test project inside the Visual Studio as well as with .NET test in the command line interface. And coverlet.collector is optional. This allows collecting code coverage. And if you don't need this, um, if you don't intend to collect code coverage, we could remove the package reference. So could remove this package reference if we like. Okay, let's remove this package. Again, save this. Now, let's get back to the unit test one class that is created for us. Now, in this case, this single empty unit test is also generated when you create the first X unit test. And let's ensure that it builds correctly, build solution. Build started. Now let's learn how to use the test explorer. So test explorer, we can open it from here, test and so this is by clicking test and text, test explorer. The window opens, I will put it on this page itself. 
Right, it's taking the full page. Um, let's peg it to the side, okay? And give it more real estate so that I can see my code, okay? So you can see there are a few groups of buttons. The first group is run all tests. There's a green button, like double arrow, green arrow, and there is a run button. So you can, if you expand this run, run all tests in view, run field test, run not run test, pass test, etc. Okay. And there is another button group, which is, you know, one total test, zero pass test, zero field test and one not run test. Okay. So I have not run this test. Okay. Because there's nothing uh, here. And then there is a group here. Uh, There is the advanced uh, options group over here settings options this is advanced options group here let's click ok to close this all right so let's write some test like our first test okay So this fact attribute, it is applied to a method to indicate that it is a fact. It should be run by the test runner. It can also be extended to support a customized definition of a test method. Okay. So fact is always true and we later on inspect theory. So this is just for actually uh, sending through just one data, one set of data, which is just like, you know, let's write something assert class assert automatically included by including the x unit so x unit is included in the using statement global using x unit here yeah, this is a .NET 7 okay so assert dot equal this is the expected this is the actual so expected is say nine and i will create a method which is not there multiply method and i will supply two arguments value one and two and uh, multiply and multiplication of these two values should equal nine this is the expected this is the um actual all right now this test let me rename this so that it can give me a better idea of what this is this is the passing test okay and i'll make this multiply method by quick action refactoring generate method multiply okay so multiply no not exactly through this method uh, multiply oh that is a way of writing it more cleanly uh, but i'll have to still create it didn't create the multiply method for me no, okay no issues so let's write the multiply method return a into b so that is the multiply method okay right this is the passing test and let's write the failing test i'll just copy this part
and this is the passing test this is the failing test and here how to fill this it will still be calling the multiply method and passing the same parameters arguments 3 and 3 and then um, the, this is the expected value is 10 actual value is multiply 3 into 3 that is 9 so it will fail definitely it is going to fail all right so let's run this test explorer run all tests in view sorry here it will be written a multiplied by b so and then click on run again so one failing test and one passing test passing test duration just four millisecond and failing test see you can say asset dot equal failure expected 10 actual 9 so expected 10 actual 9 because 3 into 3 multiply is 9 so one passing test and one failing test now let's write our first theory so we have wondered we may be wondering why our first unit tests are an attribute named fact rather than the one with a more traditional name like test xunit.net includes support for two different major types facts are the tests which are always true they test invariant conditions whereas theories that we are going to cover now are tests which are only true for a particular set of data now let's add a theory to our existing facts including a bit of bad data so we can see it fail okay so in the same test unit one class unit test one class we'll add some uh, theory theory attribute inline data okay so automatically it is filling it but you know because i'm going to write a different method so this inline data is not correct so let me first write this method So return value percentage 2 equals 0. So if it is divided by 2 for any even number, the criteria is if it is divided by 2 and there is no remainder. Okay. So remainder is 0. So let's write some inline data.
that's it okay as a dot true is even value so when in the inline data one by one each of these data will be fed three four six and eight and let's see and we'd expect these two to fail because three and four are not even numbers and four and six and eight are even numbers so two tests will pass so let's again try run all tests or theory test you can run first so as expected only the value 3 failed because that is a odd number 4 6 and 8 are even numbers because all of these are divisible by 2 so we have got one failed test and three passing tests and for unit test it still remained one failing test and one passing test so there are two passing tests two uh, sorry two fail tests uh, two failing tests and six total six in total and four pass test so four passed two fail test and total six so here we can see finally we have written just three methods passing test failing test and is even uh, sorry uh, we have written three test method but the test runner actually ran five tests so basically we have um, the test runner has run six tests although there are only um, two test methods that is multiply method and is even method but each of these theory is a separate test because each theory with this data set is a separate test and also we have seen that the error tells which set of data field because it includes the parameter values in the name of the test. The test explorer UI even shows a new level in the tree as each row of the data becomes a test result and underneath its test method. Okay, So this is a failed test and these are past tests with this value under a new tree and this is the for the unit test one failing test and passing uh, i mean failing test and passing test and these are the other four tests okay so we have covered all of these learning outcomes create a unit test project and we have seen how to use the test explorer writing the first test and writing the first theory